Hi everyone and welcome back to our channel. We are shortly going to embark on Azamara Pursuit and this is going to be quite a, a small ship for us. Um, it's definitely one of the smallest ships that we've been on um, with only having around 700 passengers and 380 crew. Um, this cruise ship was originally built for Renaissance Cruises in 2001 and it is one of the four ships that Azamara op operate which include the Pursuit which we're going to embark on, the Quest, the Onward and the Journey. So we board the ship in uh, Rome or we fly to Rome and then we board in Citta Cibetia, if I've said that right. Uh, then we visit the ports of Livorno which we stay overnight in port. Um, then we go on to visit uh, Monaco, uh, Corsica, uh, Majorca and Menorca and then we finish up in Barcelona. Barcelona. Yeah. Um, so a couple of new ports for us which we're quite excited about and as Will said this will be the smallest ship we've ever cruised on and I guess that's one of the things that seems to be different with Azamara is that they sort of like the fact and they pride themselves on having these smaller ships and they sort of advertise the fact that they can get into smaller ports and that when you cruise with them you can visit places that you may not be able to see or you know cruise into if you were on some of the bigger ocean liner ships so on pursuit um we've read so much about it we've read you know reviews online and we've watched other people's videos about this ship um and like some of the comments that we've read are a bit a bit of a mixed bag um, mm, but yeah. we're, we're going to make our own uh, minds up whenever we go on our cruise um but roughly it has about seven restaurants and lounges you obviously have your main dining room and then there is two specialty dining restaurants on board yeah. which is the aquilina which is pasta and italian food and then Prime C, which um, sort of seems to be nearly like the onboard steak restaurant. Yeah, it will be odd to have that little of choice and compared to the likes of Virtuoso, which we've just been on. But I guess with only having 700 passengers. Yeah, we don't really. Fine. Yeah, it'll be fine. I don't think we need that many more places to eat and, uh, and drink in. Um, but as well as that, they have some little, you know, bars and that on board. Um, they one of the differences we noticed whenever we were looking at the deck plans was that there is no like theater as such. Mm. Uh, it does say there's a cabaret lounge, so we're sort of guessing that that might be what the difference is. Um, uh, between um, you know, Azamara ships and you know another uh cruise line, mm. and um, it has a little cafe on board. Um, and as well as that, one of the spaces that we're looking um, forward to um, checking out is the Dayan, um, which seems to be like a new lounge, um, which is all about um, destination immersion, um, where you can do a bit of research about the ports that you're going to visit. Um, and that sort of seems to be the thing that we have taken out of reading about Azamara is that it's all about destination immersion and mm. experiences you know of your destination and the cultures uh, within your destination yeah and i would say just looking at from the website like the the drawing room um, that has like the library inside it and the, the living room which is another space they all to me they have they're they're giving off like a more of a luxury feel than a normal cruise line so it'll be nice to go on board and experience these spaces and see how they compare to the more mainstream cruise lines yeah um certainly whenever we were reading because we're one of the things that we were um a bit nervous about is that um whenever we've priced cruises before with azamara they've been really expensive and uh, now we got this at a really good price and um, mm. thanks to our travel agent uh dan and um but one of the things that we were sort of worried about was um is an expensive cruise line going to be more formal or mm. uppity or because anybody who has watched our videos knows that that's not what we're about. No. So it probably is something that we're nervous about. But yet, whenever we look at the, the website and we look at the uh, information on their website and the venues that are on board, it seems to have more of a like a club sort of feel, like country club kind of style feel. Certainly having areas like, you know, the drawing room and the living room mm -hmm. all sort of scream to me you know, relaxing areas, you know, places to chill. So I'm actually looking forward to this ship yeah, being definitely. quite relaxing and hopefully, you know, having those nice spaces then just to sort of kick back and relax in. So one of the other things that I'm a little bit concerned about is the size of the ship. So the ship only holds um, around 700 passengers. 
So I'm just a little bit concerned about how that's going to feel in the Mediterranean Sea in November. How's it going to deal with the winds and stuff? Are we going to be rocked about a bit more just because it simply doesn't have that uh, mass and uh, size to resist those waves? But yeah, it's something that I'll be keeping an eye on. I think obviously then on the on the reverse side of that, with it being a smaller ship, the positive would that be is that because there's a good sort of passenger to crew ratio, crew, yeah. we're sort of wondering is that going to give us a, more of a, an opportunity to get to know the crew, yeah, and possibly get to know more of the passengers because we'll see the same faces more often. Um, some cruises we've been on we've maybe met somebody on an excursion but then we never see them on the ship or you see people on the last day like that you think oh we've never seen them before either yeah so we're, we're sort of looking forward to that point of it to sort of see because sometimes yeah, like the intimacy yes of that yeah. smaller cruise line the, yeah. The, yeah the intimacy of a smaller cruise line just to sort of see is that something that we like mm-hmm. um, or maybe it is maybe it is a good thing because maybe we don't want to meet other people but um, mm-hmm. the uh, so no yeah we're looking forward to sort of seeing what that's going to be like then another thing in terms of the venues on a larger ship you could go to a different restaurant nearly every night and then you could also go to a completely different bar Mm -hmm. whereas on this there's only seven places that are include the lounge the bars and the restaurants Mm -hmm. so it'll be interesting to see how that pairs out you know really but i think it'll be a nice thing it'll pull back to the whole intimacy thing and getting to know the crew better which we personally would like yeah so in terms of uh, something else that we love about cruising is the dining experiences. Um, we, we love the fact that when you go on a cruise holiday, there'll be, even if you're just going to the main dining room, that you're going to the same place every night and there's menus that are different every night, so you have plenty of choice. Um, one of the things that we're really looking forward to about trying with Azamara is their food. Um, We've chatted to people who have cruised with Azamara before mm. and we have read things online and people seem to rave about the food. Um, the other things they seem to rave about are the As Amazing evenings. <laughs> um, I'm which, a bit more apprehensive about something being called As Amazing anything. But... <laughs> um, so basically an As Amazing evening is a concept for the cruise line that they... Um, you basically experience entertainment either on board the ship or on land, mm-hmm. um, which sort of immerse you in in, in the immerse immerse, immerse. you or a, 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 <laughs> in, immerses you, John. Immerses you in okay. the um the local culture and you know to have that uh, immersive experience, uh, in that p- uh, port. So our evening is in Livorno. Ah, oh, is that why it docks overnight in Livorno? Overnight. That's, I'm just realising this now. Yeah. <laughs> I booked the cruise as well, just goes on. <laughs> um, and uh, then the other thing is White Night. So obviously we've been in other cruise lines that do White Nights um, and uh, Azamara do White Nights as well. Mm-hmm. But again, theirs is slightly different because according to their website, it's where officers and crew and passengers get together. There's a special meal put on. Mm-hmm. And it's normally that you'll dine off fresco, provided that the weather is okay. Um, so fingers good, crossed yeah, for good, good weather. And, um, and then obviously there must be some sort of a party or thing afterwards. But it'll be interesting to see how Azamara do uh, white nights differently from the last cruise that we were on which was about 2,000 people crammed into one space, all dancing, drinking, and um, confetti <laughs> cannons going off. Yeah. Um, so we'll, we'll see, and we'll bring you along with us uh, to show you about that. So it's a bit of a mixed bag, really, for us, um, because this is something that we haven't done before. It's the smallest cruise ship we've been on yeah. yet. Um, and uh, but we, So we're apprehensive about it to a certain degree, uh, but at the same time, we're going to give it a go and we hope that you will follow along in our vlogs whenever we are away. Um, so first of all, we'll probably put out uh, some footage about our cabins and things mm-hmm. like that. Um, but then we'll do a daily vlog whenever we are on our cruise so that you can follow along with us and see what we think of Azamara Cruises and whether we'll be converted to a smaller ship. Smaller ship cruising, yeah. Um, or whether we'll be itching to get back on something big, bold and beautiful. If you liked this video, please consider giving us a thumbs up down below and click the subscribe button and also ring that bell so you don't miss out on our next video. Thank you so much for watching. Bye. Bye.